Africa's economy is struggling. There's no immediate solution to chronic unemployment. The country needs skilled professionals to help turn the situation around. But immigration is on the rise quite dramatically. Reports suggest those who can afford to are opting to hedge their bets abroad. To help us explore this, I'm joined from our Cape Town studio by Sable International immigration expert Andrew Rissick. Andrew Rissick, very good morning. Why are people leaving? Good morning, Jane, and to the viewers. Um, lots of people are leaving for ve many different reasons. Um, and I think equally, you know, a lot of people do come back home. But at the moment, we're seeing a net trend outwards. And, uh, you know, everyone's got a different push factor. But a lot of people are leaving because of economic uncertainty and crime. Crime is a really big driver as well. What sort of numbers are we looking at? Uh, the numbers, uh, we're looking at probably about 25,000 skilled people a year are leaving South Africa, of which probably between one and 2,000 of those are really wealthy people. So a lot of them will be going based on their skills, but a lot of people who've got money will also look at buying their way into other countries. So these are, these are really high quality potential taxpayers that South Africa is losing. I mean, which is obviously uh, not good for South Africa. We, we need this skill set. Uh, what do you make of the, the type of person who's leaving? Obviously, it's the, the middle class, but unlike the exodus that we saw in 1994, much of it is the black middle class. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think there's no racial discrimination on who's leaving. It's people who, who are able to leave. And what we've got to understand in this sort of global world, the youngsters are looking for mobility. Um, you know, they don't necessarily have any allegiance to staying in South Africa. they are fantastic opportunities abroad. And uh, all over the world, governments are looking for skilled workers. And they're also looking for taxpayers. So a lot of young South Africans, black, white, colored, Indian, are, are, are seen all over the world in, in some of the bigger economies. And what is it that we are offering them? And what are some of the challenges if somebody is offered a job there? Look, I, mean, I, think the, I think the thing that uh, people are really attracted to is obviously overseas experience, going and traveling, and it's a hedging strategy, and if things work out well, they'll, they'll probably end up staying overseas. What we see is a lot of people who, with young children, tend to start get, getting pulled back to South Africa because of family ties and family links, although that, we believe, at the moment is slower than in the past sort of decade because of the c concerns around the, the, the economic uh, situation in South Africa as we know it's it's really pretty negative at the moment um, hopefully we pull through the next year is going to be very telling um, but I think as long as the push factors are really strong in South Africa people will keep looking abroad and I um, yeah, that something the, the, the government should really rand, take note of I should imagine the battered rand doesn't help those looking abroad though at the moment I mean obviously getting another currency is pretty attractive but it makes it harder to leave Yeah, it's very hard to leave at the moment. I mean, the, the RAND has lost 5 or 6% in the last week. Look, that, that's internal factors driving it as well as external factors. But South Africans are becoming poorer and poorer um, in terms of uh, a, a measurement against hard currencies like the U.S. dollar. And I think that's also part of a wealth preservation strategy. Um, a lot of people do look to go abroad. As uncomfortable as it is, and it's really expensive, you know, the sooner people do it, the better. That's kind of the view that we're seeing at the moment with, with our clients. And what certainly. makes it challenging or sort of rather attractive for them, other than the fact that uh, there's hopefully less crime over there, are the citizenship and investment programs. Talk us a little through those. Yeah, there are lots of those. So this is more for people who don't have a birthright back to any foreign heritage like British nationality, um, or maybe don't have the skill sets or they're too old, then there's an option that they can buy their way into a country. Um, really popular program at the moment is Portugal. Um, that offers you residency for an investment of, of anywhere from 350,000 euros, which is well over five, five million rand, so it's a lot of money. Mm. Um, the United States um, are, are eagerly trying to attract uh, wealthy investors through their EB-5 program. And that's uh, 500,000 US dollars. There is talk that that'll be increased to 900,000 dollars, which is, which is also, a, you know, a lot of money. Um, 
So that's more for people who are physically looking to relocate to the U.S. So these programs are really, it's not a one-size-fits-all uh, situation. We really need to look at what each family are looking to try and achieve, whether it's a permanent move or whether it's a hedging plan B. Andrew Rissick, thank you for talking to us. What's been described as a mass exodus from the country.